Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 4, Newton's Laws, Video 5. Today's topic is Newton's Third Law. The objectives are to know Newton's Third Law, to understand the two forces in an action-reaction pair are on different bodies, be able to apply Newton's Third Law to objects at rest and objects in motion, to explain Newton's Third Law's paradox. Let's see what's Newton's third law. So a force acting on a body is always the result of its interaction with another body. So forces always comes in pairs. When you exert a force on a body, it will always result in a force back upon you. For example, when you kick a soccer ball, you exert a force on the soccer ball. At the same time, the soccer ball exerts the same force acting on you. The two forces are the same in magnitude and opposite in direction. So action Forces are in contact, they also exist when the forces are long range. For example, when you drop a ball, the ball and the earth accelerates actually toward each other. That is because the force acting on the ball from earth and there is a ball exerted the same force on the earth. The two forces are the same in magnitude. The earth acceleration is microscopically small because the mass is so great. Reaction pair are on different bodies. Let's consider an uh, apple sitting on the table. So there are two forces acting on the apple. The first is normal force from the table. The other one is gravitational force from the earth. The two forces cancel out. That's why the apple is at rest. However, these two forces are not action reaction forces because they are acting on the same object, the apple. This is, when we talk about the motion of the apple, we are considering first and second law. Now, Newton's third law is different. Newton's third law considers the forces acting on different objects. For example, the gravity from the Earth acting on the apple, the reaction force of that is the apple exert on Earth. So one is on the apple, one is on Earth. So the action-reaction forces always acting on two different objects. And these two forces are the same, but in the opposite direction. The two forces of action-reaction pair are on different objects, unlike Newton's first and second law. Let's take a look at this example. <clears throat> After your sports car breaks down, you start to push it to the nearest repair shop. While the car starts to move, how does the force you exert on the car compare to the force the car exerts on you? How do these forces compare when you're pushing the car along at a constant speed? So the first one is when uh, the, the car is at rest. The second one is when the car is in motion. So in both cases, the force you push on the car is the same as the car pushed back on you because they are action-reaction pairs. Newton's third law holds whether the two objects are at rest, move with constant velocity, or accelerating. Let's consider the objects at rest. The same goes back to this. Let's go back to the same situation when apple is resting on the table. So, what are the forces acting on the apple? We know there are two forces: the normal force and the gravitational force. These two forces are not action-reaction forces because they are acting on the same object. What is the reaction force on each force acting on the apple? Well, the gravitational force, the reaction for that is the apple exert on Earth. And then for the normal force from the table is the apple exert the force on the table. So the Earth on the apple and apple on Earth, those are action-reaction pairs. And the same relay, the table on the apple and the apple on table are also action-reaction pairs. Another example is objects in motion. A stonemason drags a marble block across the floor by pulling on a rope attached to the block. The block may or may not be in equilibrium. What are the forces on the block, the mason, and the rope? And what are the action-reaction pairs? So let's consider forces on the block. The forces on the block can be from the rope and from the from the floor. So floor on the block and the rope on the block. These are both acting on the block, so they are not action-reaction forces. Now the, uh, the forces on mason. The forces on the mason could be rope on the mason, 
and the fluoronamacin. Again, these are not action-reaction reaction pairs because they are both acting on a mason. <coughs> Excuse. Uh, that's considered a force acting on a rope. The block on the rope and the mason on the rope. Again, these are not action-reaction forces because they are both on the rope. Now, what are the action-reaction pairs? The action-reaction pairs is the rope on the mason and the uh, mason on the rope. So ro rope on mason and the mason on the rope, these are acting on the two objects. They are the same in magnitude and opposite in direction. Another action-reaction pair is block on the rope and rope on the block. Those are action-reaction pairs as well because they are acting on different objects. Newton's third law paradox. So we saw in the previous example, so the stoneman pulls as hard on the rope block combination as that combination pulls back on him. Then why then does the block move and the stone mason remains stationary? That's considered a situation again. So when, when we have to analyze the situation for the stone mason, why is the stone mason at rest? We consider, we only consider the force acting on the mason. The force acting on the mason is from the floor, the friction acting on the mason, and the rope acting on the mason. So when the mason is at rest, it's because these two forces cancel out each other. On the other hand, the block is moving while considering the forces acting on the block, the rope acting on the block, and the friction acting on the block. If the rope acting on the block is bigger than the friction acting on the block, then the block is in motion. So even though the rope on the mason and uh, um, the mason on the rope are the same, but they are not acting on the same object. They are action-reaction pairs. So they are acting on different objects. So when we analyze the motion of the, uh, an, uh, the motion of an object, we don't use Newton's third law. We use Newton's first and second law, so we consider the forces acting on that object. Check your understanding. So you are driving your car on a country road when a mosquito splatters itself on the windshield. Which one has a greater magnitude? The force on the car? The, the force the car exerts on the mosquito? Or the force the mosquito exerts on the car? The forces, the force on mosquito, and the force on the car acting on each other, considering the same in magnitude and opposite in direction. However, since the car train is so much larger than the mosquito train, so its, its acceleration is imperceptible, imperceptible comparing to the mosquito's catastrophic large acceleration. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.